In the following videos, we will deploy various applications related to ELK stack. If you do not have any experience deploying Elasticsearch, please do not worry. I will take the approach of showing you how to manually install and configure the application first before I show you how to automate the deployment steps. If you already know how to manually deploy ELK stack, please feel free to skip the manual installation videos and watch the automation videos straight away. Hey guys, in this lecture, I will show you how to manually install and configure ELK stack on our Linux virtual machine inside GCP. We will use Elasticsearch Debian package for the purpose of this demo. At a high level, we will do the following 8 steps. First, we will install OpenJDK 8, which is a prerequisite for Elasticsearch. And then, we will add the Elasticsearch public signing key, after which we will install apt transport HTTPS package. Once that is done, we will save Elasticsearch repository definitions onto our VM and then finally we will update our system and install Elasticsearch, Logstash and Kibana. Once the installation is done, we will configure each application and then in the end, we will test connectivity to our Elasticsearch cluster and Kibana UI. We have created a GCP Cloud Compute Engine VM to host our ELK servers in the previous lectures. There are two ways to access your VM. If you click on the SSH button on the right hand side of this VM, it will open up a new SSH console connection through your web browser. So you can SSH into your VM using your browser or you can use the virtual machine that is authorized which means it has its SSH keys added into your GCP account. I will use the terminal connection but it's up to you. You can choose either of the methods. They're both fine. So I'll minimize this. Now I've got the notes on how to install Elasticsearch using Debian packages on this file. What I'll do is I'll add this file into the description of this video so you guys can have access to this file as well. So first I will need to connect from my lab virtual machine into my GCP cloud virtual machine. To do that, let me go to the console first. Right next to the external IP of the virtual machine, if I click on this little icon, it'll copy the external IP address into clipboard. And I will type in SSH lab it at and then I'll paste the IP address and hit enter. Now you can see that I was able to successfully connect to the virtual machine in GCP cloud. Now the first step is to install the Java application. So let's copy this step which does an update of system and then installs Java. So control C. and then hit enter. So now it's gonna update the system first and then we'll try to install Java. Now once Java is installed, we can go to the next step which is to download and install the public signing key. So I'll copy the next set of command, control C, control V and hit enter. And this will add the public signing key for Elasticsearch using the apt key add command. Once that is done, let me first clear this. We'll need to install the sudo apt transport https package. So let's copy this and hit enter. Once the apt transport https package is installed, we can go ahead and save the directory definitions. So we'll need to use this command to save the directory definitions inside sources.list.d directory on our system and hit enter. Now once this is done, we'll need to run a apt-get update command and hit enter. Once that is done, let me just clear it first and then we can type in sudo apt get install Elasticsearch and sudo apt get install logstash and sudo apt get install kibana and hit enter. And this should start the installation of ELK stack on my GCP virtual machine. Now this might take some time, so I'll pause the video here. 
Now it looks like the ELK stack is installed on this machine now. Now before we start Elasticsearch service, we'll have to configure it. And the configuration file Elasticsearch.yaml is located in slash etc slash Elasticsearch. So let's first do sudo su to become root. Now we'll need to do nano slash etc slash Elasticsearch slash Elasticsearch.yaml. Now in the Elasticsearch.yaml file, there are a couple of settings that we'll need to modify. The first one is cluster.name. This is used to set a descriptive name for your cluster. Now for our demo cluster, I'll type in demo-elk. Now the next setting we'll need to edit is the descriptive name of node. Now I'll uncomment it. And for the node, I'll type in demo dash node. We can leave the rest of the settings as default and go to network. And underneath network settings, we'll have to uncomment network.host and change this to 0.0.0.0. .0. What this does is it allows this particular node to accept incoming connections from any IP address. Now next we'll have to uncomment http.port but we won't change the value we'll leave it as default of 9200. Now we'll need to go right to the bottom of this configuration file and here we'll need to add a setting to specify that this is a single node cluster. And that setting is discovery.type. So let me control C. Control V. Now I can save this file. And I can start the Elasticsearch service. So sudo. So I'm already root, so I don't need to do sudo. Systemctl start Elasticsearch. Now, if the file was configured correctly, then this service should start. However, if you see any failures on this service, that means your file is not configured correctly. It might have typos in it, or it might not have a particular value that the system was looking for, etc., etc. So basically, if the service does not start properly, you need to go look at your Elasticsearch.yaml file. Now, it looks like our service started successfully. So just to demonstrate, what I'll do is I'll go into the elasticsearch.yaml file and here I'll go right at the bottom and instead of dot I'll put in an underscore and now I'll try restarting the service oh I expect to see an error because the file was not configured properly there's a type on the file so as you can see got an error that the elasticsearch.service failed so what I'll do now is I'll go back to my YAML file go right to the bottom and change it to dot again hit enter save and now I can restart my elasticsearch service Now once the service is up, we can use curl command to look at the health of the cluster. So what we can do is we can type in curl minus xget and then http localhost because this is running on local and we'll need to call the cluster API and we're looking for health of the cluster and then pretty just to make it human readable now if your cluster is configured properly you should see the name of the cluster and the status of the cluster should be green and then it needs to have a, a proper number of nodes specific for your cluster because we had a 
single node cluster, my number of node nodes would be one. Now, once this is done, we can go ahead and configure Kibana. So we'll need to go to nano slash etc slash kibana slash kibana.yml and hit enter here the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to uncomment server.port but we'll leave the value as default 5601 this is the port that kibana ui runs on now under server.host we'll need to change it to 0.0.0, .0 as well so that kibana can accept incoming connections from anywhere in the world now if you were running a production instance of kibana you probably will have to restrict this but because this is a demo lab 0.0.0, .0 should be fine now next we'll need to change the kibana server's name so we'll change it to demo kibana Now next we'll have to uncomment the elasticsearch.hosts. This is the URL of the Elastic server. And if you notice, this is the same as the curl command that we ran because Kibana and Elasticsearch are hosted locally. If you had a system or setup where your Kibana server was on a different host than your Elastic server, then the Elastic server's host name or IP address would go in here where the local host is. Now we can leave the rest of the values default right now and control X and save the file. Now we can start the Kibana service. Now, since Kibana service runs on top of Elasticsearch, as Kibana is just a GUI application, you need to have the Elasticsearch service running before Kibana service can start. So if I type in systemctl, status kibana the service is active and running let me just demonstrate what happens when i shut down elastic search service and then try and run up kibana so system ctl stop elastic search and let me try to restart kibana now let me do systemctl status kibana now you would see that in the log there will be a line that says that it's trying to connect to elasticsearch but it was not so if i run systemctl status kibana again the message you're looking for is no living connections error that's telling you that the underlying elasticsearch connection is dead so this is really important guys so to fix this we need to make sure that the Elasticsearch service is running. Now, once the Elasticsearch service boots up, you can do a status on Kibana again and it will start initializing the connection, which can be seen from status changed from uninitiated to green, which means our Kibana should be ready now what we can do is we can go back to our browser we can copy the external ip address paste it here in a separate tab and specify the port for kibana 5601 and it should take us to the home page of kibana now once you get to the home page of kibana click on explore on my own you'll see that on the left hand side is the navigation menu and i'll explain this navigation menu and what each of these individual items do at a later part in this playlist thank you for watching i will see you in the next one where we configure xpac security bye if you like this video please subscribe to our youtube channel if you like this video please subscribe to our youtube channel